So today we're going to be checking out this split AC unit that we got. We've been researching AC units for a long time. It's something we know we wanted, but uh, there's so many different choices out there. And having a DC system that could run off a 12 or 24 volt system was important to us. We considered the more traditional like household mini splits, but I think we're pretty stoked on the system we got. We're going to be doing an unboxing, and then we're going to actually take that unit all the way apart to its individual components, and we'll talk about how we're going to mount it. So check it out. So before we're getting started with the uh, unboxing and kind of layout of this AC split system, I am blown away this thing made it one piece. I must say the packaging was pretty minimal. I mean, it was honestly tightly packed in just a single cardboard box with very, you know, a single layer cardboard box with literally no padding anywhere. So. If I was to order one of these again, I would definitely request that they double box this somehow. It's amazing it made it from China to here in the mountains of Idaho in one piece. I I'm blown away. There's a tiny bit of damage to one corner of this box, but honestly, it, it's, it looks like it's in one piece. But I can't imagine how many of these must get destroyed because the box looked terrible and there was literally nothing protecting it. So, I think I just got lucky. Well, let's get to it. Let's have a look at these components, see what you think. First off, pretty simple user's guide. Uh, moderately useful. It does actually have pretty decent error codes, which I liked. So there's about 12 error codes that can show up on this unit, which could help troubleshoot things on the evaporator unit. And then there's a series of error codes that can be read via this LED flashing light down here in the corner for the condenser. Other than that, it just has some basic installation instructions, some maintenance and cleaning tips, as well as pretty basic instructions on how to um, charge the system with refrigerant. So we have our big condenser unit, evaporator unit. This is uh, just a drainage hose for condensation from the evaporator. Wiring harness, a couple different pieces to that. Got an assortment of bolts and hardware, as well as our remote control. And then we've got two lines for the coolant. And I'll measure these here in just a minute and give you the specs on all that. I'll also measure the actual dimensions of everything and we can just compare it to what the advertised dimensions were. But let's, uh, yeah, let's have a closer look at this condenser. So first off, we've just got two connections coming off of it. This here will connect to this harness system. And these are your main positive and negative going to the battery. This is a 24 volt version. They also have a 12 volt version. So that will connect in here, going to your battery. This wire here connects to this harness, which goes inside and plums to the inside unit. So the outside unit, pretty straightforward. We basically have a fan with four bolts and a radiator behind that. Here you can see the compressor unit. And in this red box, there's really not much in here. There's just the compressor, the radiator, and then the fan on the outside. I'm gonna be taking this apart so that I can spray paint this is just a plastic case um, so that I can spray paint this a different color. Scratch that. We're actually going to be taking this whole thing apart and ditching this box. So stick around till the end. Moving on to the inside indoor unit. Pretty 
pretty straightforward. We've just got these kind of louvered air vents. I mean, I'll be honest, this thing feels pretty cheap. It's just kind of chintzy, kind of cheap feeling plastic. Not gonna lie, it's um, nothing too remarkable. This is your control unit for the temperature. I know it's gonna be in Celsius. They don't have a Fahrenheit version, but I'll get more into that once I have a chance to run it and how to program that. Basically, you just have a couple kind of circular squirrel fans up top here that just blow past the condenser unit and out. So it'll be real interesting here in a bit to see what the sound is like. And then here are the connections for the refrigerant lines. And again, here's the connection for uh, that, that connects the outdoor unit with the indoor unit. Well, let's get to some measurements. So the inside unit measures, oh, about six and a half inch deep, 18 wide, 12 and 5 eighths tall. The outdoor unit is coming in at uh, 20 and 3 quarter. by 15 and 3 quarter and the depth let me put this up against the wall so I can measure it more accurate and the depth is about just under 10 and a half inches this cord here came to 11 and a half feet this wiring came to nine and a half feet. And the two coolant lines, the smaller diameter one came to 10 and a half feet and the larger diameter came in at 11 feet. Now let's hop outside and we'll have a look at where we're thinking of mounting this exterior unit. We have a couple options. Uh, one option is behind the cab against the camper box, kind of facing the front of the vehicle, or we're going to place it on the back of the camper underneath the camper box along the frame rails. So let's go take a look at those two spots and see how they look. All right. That's Hank. Say hi to Hank. This here is our new. 16.5 come up winch. We'll be getting to that here in a couple days. I'll probably do a quick video on that. But yeah, let's have a look at a couple locations. So one idea was to tuck it back here. And the other idea is to mount it underneath here between our air compressor and our air compressor tank. So this is our ideal, we're hopeful we can get it here spot. We'd like to mount the inside unit towards the front of the camper. This would basically sit between our toilet area and our shower area on the upper wall. If we were to mount it towards the back underneath the box, we'd have to put the inside unit right above our bed which sits about three or four feet up so yeah we don't love the idea of having the fan unit that close to us so this is going to be ideal what i was concerned about is the space in here and whether it's going to actually fit i don't think it is but as you'll see, once we take this box apart to paint, it's gonna be really easy to move these components around and get us some more space. So that's kind of what I'm shooting for. But let's just see how this does fit up here. So you can see it does actually fit, but it is tight you know, less than, uh, less than an inch between some of these locking components for the cab and tilt. In addition, I don't think it would clear 
tilting the cab. So this really isn't going to be a good option. So first, let's have a quick look at the back here and see if this would have been a viable option. And like I said, I've got the frame rail, frame rail, and then I've got a two gallon air tank and then this air compressor. But actually between these two, there is room to mount the unit. So just be a matter of putting a couple cross members here for it to sit on and you'd be good to go. So that's definitely a good option even with my air compressor set up. But what I do want to show is inside this red box is pretty much completely empty. You've got the uh, that kind of silver radiator you can just see there and in this whole space here is empty and then you've got this compressor unit which is attached by a hose to the radiator so my thinking is to separate these two units so the fan and radiator I will keep connected and probably mount those up here on the wall and then I'm thinking to mount the compressor unit hanging underneath the box like so. So let's go ahead and get this thing pulled apart and see if that's even an option. So across the top are just four, I'm sorry, it looks like six screws. Now you can get a little better shot inside of there. See how that's just a bunch of empty space. I think we can capitalize on that and get a pretty compact system going here. And then it looks like this radiator fan is just held in by four of these bolts. Okay, so you can see here we've got the fan detached, pretty straightforward, it's just got a power cord running to this compressor box. And then, as you can see, this radiator also comes out nice and clean. It's got a pretty short hose to it, but I think we'll be able to make it work. Let's undo the bolts on the compressor here. Well, we've got it apart now. So we've got our band unit, and this will attach to the back side of the radiator. And the radiator was originally oriented like so. And I think what I'm hoping to do is put the radiator like this against the wall with the fan on this back side here. I'll, I'll be able to pivot this joint a little bit. So this will be sitting above on the front of the box here. And then I'll be able to put the compressor down underneath right in here. So I actually sent an email to the manufacturer of these folks to ask as long as I keep the compressor in the correct orientation is it okay to rotate this 90 degrees and hopefully I'll get a thumbs up on that and we'll just uh, loosen this a bit, pivot that down so that this can raise up above the compressor. Radiator here, compressor underneath I think that's going to be perfect. I'll let you know. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I'll leave a link in the description for the uh, actual unit that we purchased. In addition, I've got that article that we wrote that kind of covers some of the different options for DC air conditioners. We kind of use that as a way to research this. I haven't actually included this air conditioner into that article yet, but I plan to in the future. So that's worth checking out. 
All right, like and subscribe. Next up will be the full install as well as an actual test of the unit. We'll see what this thing can do. See you in the next one.